Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. Let's go for seeing, get it away. Did you know that most manip- municipalities and government agencies auction off big ticket surplus items that are no longer needed or in service? Business owners can benefit from buying vehicles, heavy equipment, and other big items they need through government auctions. Government auctions can also open up a lucrative side business in buying and selling auction items. Here to discuss the fascinating world of government auctions is Greg Berry. He's the CEO and founder of Municibid, the go-to online marketplace for government auctions. Greg Berry, welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Please say hello to our audience. Hi there. Really appreciate you having me and looking forward to our discussion. Great. So you're uh, calling in from once again, the beautiful metropolis, not shouldn't say metropolis, beach waterfront marina of Marina Del Rey. <laughs> California. That's correct. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's somebody's telling me I need to, to move to the West Coast because we've got so many uh, great, interesting guests in there. Uh, living on the West Coast. So how's everything uh, How's everything out in, I'll call it La La Land today. It how's is. everything in La La Land? <laughs> Sunny. Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly warm uh, this time of year, um, but it's warmer than being in the Northeast of, uh, from Philadelphia is where I'm from originally. Is- and uh, moved out here three years ago to facilitate uh, our expansion into the West Coast uh, and the Western half of the United States. And when you came out, did you plan on originally going back or you just stayed? <laughs> no, I think I, I knew I was going to be out here for a while, but you know, who knows? Who knows? But yeah. Well, it's a great place yeah. to be for, you know, it, it's a booming entrepreneurial. I mean, it's probably one of the biggest areas for people running, operating and owning small business entrepreneurship, the whole thing. So it's a good place to be operating. them. I mean, you can sure have access to all the talent you need directly. Uh, sure, but I, we're a hundred percent remote, so mm-hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. That, oh well, it's always kind of doesn't really matter so much. It's always great here, to be able to meet yeah. somebody in person for a cup of coffee, but nowadays you have That's virtual true. coffees. So. Yeah, exactly. Right, things have changed. <laughs> it's a virtual. Well, well Greyberry, let's get to know you better. Tell us sure. about Municipid. How did you get into the auction business? Sure, I founded Municipid back in two thousand six. I was a um, actually ran for an open spot in our uh, my local town council uh, back in Pennsylvania. Um, and that was in 2005 and I won, um, and it was a great experience And very early on, um, as a, as a town counselor, I noticed that we were selling things that the town no longer needed, uh, but we were selling it for pennies on the dollar instead of a true market value. So we would, we would sell an old police car that was worth $3,000, but we'd sell it for $300, maybe $400. And we'd have one or two people interested in it. And then, um, and then the next agenda item, you know, we're arguing over a thousand dollars and I'm like, well, wait a second, we just gave away $3,000. And, uh, so it kind of piqued my interest a bit. And I looked a little bit further into it to see how many other, uh, you know, if this was a common problem across other municipalities and it was across the state, uh, and then across the country. And so. I've always been a problem solver. Um, I started my first company right out of high school uh, in 1998 and uh, thought, man, there's got to be a better way than this. Uh, So I put together a uh, a very rudimentary sort of auction platform. And in Pennsylvania at the time, they just the the state sort of just started to allow municipalities to sell their items via uh, an online auction. And uh, so it was kind of good timing in that regard. Um, And so I got this sort of rudimentary system off the ground, got some other towns to try it since our, my, the town I represented couldn't because it would be a conflict of interest. So, uh, got some neighboring towns to give it a shot and it worked, uh, much to their surprise. So you just got started by like listing things online to, yeah. uh, So basically, uh, no, it was, uh, it was my own, our own platform that I built. Um, well, just to and, get started uh, with, probably there wasn't anything in place to begin with. People, they were just like a- advertised at the city. They have something to uh, to buy and people would just show up and it was pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So they would use what's called the sealed bid process, which essentially was just a classified ad in the paper. 
So they would rely on that. And of course, uh, even in 2006, no one, no one, not many people read that or you kind of had to be right. in the know. So there wasn't a huge audience. So building the platform did a couple things. Uh, mainly, it made it a lot more convenient uh, and a lot less intimidating for the general public uh, to find and buy these items. Uh, so instead of having to know and then go down to the town hall and fill out a bunch of complicated right. and intimidating paperwork, you could bid easily online. Uh, and then, of course, we did a lot more to market the items than what the governments themselves were doing. So, yeah, so we took those results, got testimonials, and I hit the road with those. And uh, here now, and uh, you know, did you get did you get voted out of office or? <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I did my my one term, and I was happy with that. Really. And so, uh, and it was a great experience. I'm really happy I did it. I learned a lot about a lot of different things. Uh, in there. And of course, you know, without having that opportunity, hey, if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't have seen this, uh, this business opportunity, this out opportunity out there. Just curious. Did you yeah. have a real strong computer background or just find the right I people did. to help you out with that? Yeah. So the, the first company that I started out of high school, I had some really good opportunities in high school. And as just kind of a general in, a, in my teenage years, uh, in the computer space, uh, and networking and all the it stuff and got some, uh, industry certifications, um, some highly sought after certifications mm -hmm. while I was in high school. And that kind of allowed me to, to do this right out of high school uh, and start my IT consulting company. And uh, so I actually ran that till 2010. Uh, and that's when Municipid really, really started to pick up. And this was the much bigger opportunity solving a much uh, bigger problem. You knew just enough to be dangerous to be able to get that computer platform up and then, you know, network with the right people to help you, uh, to help you grow it from there. But, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Help us you know, review the basics, Greg. In a nutshell, what exactly are you know government auctions? Yeah. So governments uh, have you know they have things. So um, and they they buy all kinds of things and they obtain different items for a variety of reasons: lost and found, uh, police forfeitures uh, as a result. Hey, sorry, of I ignore the cases. dogs in the background. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yeah. We're two years in. We're working from home. <laughs> yep. Used to it at this point. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, governments own a variety of assets that they've acquired either to to use themselves and now they no longer need uh, or lost and found type items or they take taken possession for a variety of different reasons. Um, and so they have these assets that they that they're looking to sell and they have to sell them via a competitive bidding situation. So as I said, in the old kind of the old way was, all right, they'll put a an ad in the paper. You come to the town hall, fill out some paperwork and you place one bid and it's whoever has the high bid in that one time. So you weren't able to sort of outbid each other. So the benefit to the to the agencies, uh, you know, among many is that they have a competitive bidding situation that's online. And then, of course, for the public, it's much easier. It's much more convenient and way less intimidating um then filling out all this complicated paperwork so i, so I then, hate the term win-win but it sounds like it's kind of win-win the you know you're the government's ending up getting more money and you're bringing in a broader audience yeah it really is it really is a win-win uh scenario so um you know and and as we'll discuss uh the use cases for the the items vary uh and the items range from all types of things as you mentioned vehicles heavy equipment uh, but it can be, you know, it could be jewelry, it can be furniture and IT equipment, it could be airplanes and sailboats. Um, we have a dunk tank up there now. There was a Maserati a few weeks ago. So a Maserati, I mean, yeah, you know. So like, there's, there's never. I mean, there's been bridges for sale. Uh, of course, tractors. Uh, there's got to be a trucks. story behind that Maserati. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that that one came from a police forfeiture uh, situation. Oh, okay. um, and so, and similar cases in the, in the sense of jewelry um, and other uh, items. Uh, one the case, government auction, Jason, basically, you know, they have to have a legal process for getting, for, you know, liquidating stuff they they have, they now own, they're legally required to do it. And the auction then is, is the mechanism that they use. That's correct, yep. So. yep. Well, great. We how can business, as as how can business owners them. benefit from you know, from government auctions, I guess the main benefit is, you know, getting vehicles and other special equipment you could need for the business. Yeah. I mean, so that's, I would say probably 80% of the bidders, which 
anyone in the US, uh, United States and Canada can bid. Uh, so it's open to the public to buy. So you don't have to be a business. And, and in fact, we've had parents buy their kids their first car on Municipid. And so that wasn't happening kind of in the old days. And so, um, but yeah, so landscapers buy, uh, you know, dump trucks uh, and equipment, uh, snow removal companies, they'll buy snow plows and snow plow trucks, construction companies will buy heavy equipment, uh, all the way down to DIY uh, folks that uh, do different types of DIY projects and source mm -hmm. materials uh, for government. In fact, we've had, um, we have had people buy fire hoses that they turn into wallets and other items that they then sell on sites like Etsy. Um, and we have had, um, now why a, didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, recently, um, we, we wrote up a, uh, a really nice story about this on our blog. Uh, one of our buyers who is a, a car guy, uh, would use our site to buy cars and he had a shop and he thought it'd be cool to have a traffic light in his workshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so he went to buy one, but he didn't realize he was buying 20 or 30 of them. And so he ended up finding an outlet and created a small little side business selling, uh, buying and selling uh, these traffic lights. So I guess a bit, the big benefit I'm gathering here from an auction is that if you're a business owner and you need something special, before in the old days, you'd have to like research through a thousand print, man, you know, whatever to do the research yourself. Now you can go online and, ac and access at your fingertips from yep. a broad, broad range of locations and come up, hopefully come up with the equipment that you need. It would be substantial, I guess, you know, always would be substantially cheaper than buying it, uh, you know, new from a traditional outlet. Yeah, definitely, definitely cheaper than new. Um, although, you know, it depends, it really kind of depends on the item. So the, the nice thing is, um, especially now with supply chain issues, uh, these, these items are available now. So buying used, um, it, it can be a great way to shortcut past uh, supply chain issues. Oh yeah, I mean, you see it out there. Equipment. I bet you can still see the container ships at anchor out there. Yeah, out exactly. Of Marine. That's right. So, like, what are some of the benefits of buying vehicles and other uh, specialized equipment mm -hmm. from gov government auctions versus from, say, car dealerships and other online selling platforms like Craigslist? Yeah, well, typically, um, you know, at least uh, sort of looking at, you know, buying off Municipid versus a Craigslist or a Facebook marketplace, you don't have the hassle that comes with that. You know who you're buying from. Uh, and then the, the website makes it very easy and convenient. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's a, a number of uh, features built in to, to make things a lot, uh, a lot more transparent. And again, you, you know who you're dealing with, you can go and view the auction or the auction items uh, in person if you, if you want. And uh, so, and then, and then you know the conditions uh, if, if the selling agency happens to know the conditions. So in you kind of standardize it, get it in one format, one online mm -hmm. location. Correct. And uh, which I guess would greatly simplify it by, you know, clicking all over the place with Craigslist. And it's, I guess it's a better mousetrap then for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's good deals to be had. And it, it kind of really depends on what you're looking for and what, you know, that sort of the end use of, of the item will be. Um, so like I said, people, uh, businesses, uh, which is a large part of our, our bidder base, um, you know, they continue, uh, to buy over and over again. Um, you know, again, like I said, snow plows, dump trucks, heavy equipment, vehicles themselves. Uh, and then we have, you know, for, for example, uh, vehicles that are sold that don't run, uh, that might be sold for parts. So we have parts resellers, um, and scrap yards. And so they're, they're bidding against each other, uh, for those type of items to then, uh, resell or repair and resell. So uh, it so sounds like there's a lot of repeat business. People get into this niche. And so it's not just a one-off thing. There'll be a continued supply coming from other government agencies of something that they would need. Right. And then we have other unique situations. Uh, we have collectors of fire, uh, uh, fire engines, uh, which is interesting. We've had a, uh, a former police officer uh, turn, he bought a bus uh, and turned it into a Disney themed RV. <laughs> um, and you can read about that on our blog as well. Whatever so, floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's it's really incredible. Some of the different things that people uh, 
use our site for uh, to source. To no, it's not just business. Products. People can kind of, you know, oh, yeah. explore their hobbies and those stuff. Well, you know, government auctions can also be a business opportunity within themselves, buying and selling big ticket items. Greg, any sure. advice on, you know, running an auction, uh, you, know, some, you know, an auction buying and selling as a business? Yeah, I, the biggest thing uh, that I recommend to, to buyers, that we recommend to buyers is to, to, you know, in general, just kind of be buyer beware, you know, make sure that you understand and you ask all the questions uh, and get a really good understanding of what you're actually buying before you before you bid. Uh, and that's the that's kind of the biggest piece of advice. Uh, most of the selling agencies, as I mentioned, allow you to go on site uh, to view the items, uh, kick the tires, if you will, before before you actually um, buy. So you really understand the condition of the item. Uh, and in some cases, there's great opportunities because the the governments don't have the availability or staff to be able to check to find out why a car isn't running. So the car might just be listed in, in the case of vehicles or equipment that it's not running and they, they're not sure why. And here it could just be a matter of a battery, a $70 battery. And now the car runs. Um, so, you know, if you're savvy and you can, you know, really understand what you're buying, uh, you know, you can, you can really get some good deals. So, I mean, it's not like there, there, there's a viable business here doing this, but what I'm gathering from what other businesses, you need to kind of check a little bit more, make sure the market demand is there, which is always a crapshoot, but then do some, you know, it's a buyer beware type of deal where no one, like it's a swap meet, no one's guaranteeing, uh, what is being sold sure. at auction. So you've got to do a little due diligence there, you know, to make sure if you don't know how to fix a car. Uh, you better have a mechanic standing by uh, for that yeah, good deal. Then. Right. And then even in, even in certain furniture, uh, especially wood furniture, uh, we have buyers that uh, buy the wood furniture and sort of, um, you know, rework them into to new items or refurbish them and sell them uh, for significantly more because they're in better shape or they're, you know, they've done a lot of nice work to them, repainted them. Uh, so yeah, there's a variety of options. There's, um, lot uh bulk lots of items so uh you know uh, many different many many of the same items in one auction lot and then so you're kind of buying that at a bulk discount and then those are being resold later on an individual basis uh so we we definitely have people that flip uh items for sure sounds um, like you got to be kind of flexible things can change and that that some businesses kind of get set in your ways but if you're going to be in the auction business you got to be able to kind of turn on a dime each day based on uh, what's available. Yeah, and that's the thing. Even we really don't know uh, too far in advance what's coming up for auction. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're we always surprised to see what comes <laughs> up and and, and what, what sells. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. We love war yeah. stories on the uh, podcast. Greg, what are some of the most interesting or craziest items that have been sold on Manissi bid? You know, you talked a little bit about that that bus theme, <laughs> Disney yep. theme, yeah. uh, what, what, the Maserati, anything else uh, stick out in your mind? Fun well, uh, funny enough, the uh, the town that I served uh, on when I started Municipid, um, and they've since used us for many years uh, after I uh, after I left there, um, they have a, a dunk tank up for auction right now, which I thought was pretty fun. <laughs> Sounds like something for the mayor, put him in the dunk tank. <laughs> yeah, that's the right. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty interesting. We had a... Um, a, a really, really nice sailboat out of Massachusetts uh, that the town acquired. Um, the guy lived on the sailboat um, and, and sadly he died, um, but he, his whole family um, was from overseas or lived overseas and they didn't have any way of getting the boat nor did they want it. So they just gave it to the town. Uh, and so the town auctioned that, that off with us. Um, we've had airplanes, like I said, hovercrafts, uh, so like bridges, uh, <laughs> everything and anything, uh, I have like the ultimate ego thing, you know, put a bridge <laughs> in your big backyard over the, the right, exactly. over the little yeah. crick you have in the back. <laughs> right. And then we've had vintage guitars, jewelry. Um, yeah. So it really does span. Uh, oh, it sounds like a lot of things numbers. come up where someone actually just has to get rid of something and it's not worth the hassle. Of trying yeah. to sell it and they just put it up at auction oh. yeah some of the some of those types of items like the vintage guitar and some of the jewelry uh, you know those obviously aren't things 
Uh, although we do have sc uh, schools also use us, so we see a lot of uh, you know items that you would think a school would have. But uh, yes. you know, a lot of that is uh, those types of items are lost and found, or again, um, you know, um, forfeitures in a police investigation and that sort of thing. So um, you know, that's that's always kind of interesting. But yeah, so with schools, you know, we also see kitchen equipment, gym equipment, shop equipment. Um, it sounds like it sounds like one big Walmart. I mean, it's like whatever you could. Uh, yeah, it's it's whatever. quite the it's quite the array of of items. For well, sure. we'll learn but, a lot about the auction world. Please share with us any success tips you could give our audience for acquiring uh, items through an auction. Yeah, again, I, I the th the the biggest thing is keeping your eye out on what's coming up for uh, what's coming up for auction, uh, and we we actually have a system in place that. Uh, allows the our bidders to not have to always kind of check so we'll we'll let them know based on a variety of uh criteria uh on a regular basis and then um yeah taking taking a look and really understanding uh what the items are and uh what condition they're in uh, and ensuring that you know they are it's suitable for example um you know sometimes there'll be things like vehicle attachments or heavy equipment attachments and making sure the attachments actually work with the uh, the piece of equipment you're going to install it on. Do, do uh, typically they come with some kind of some kind of guarantee on something bigger that it at least runs or it just it's buyer beware? Well, pretty much all items are sold as is uh, on Municipid uh, because they are used um, and for the most part, out of any kind of warranty. Now, every now and then there will Something be- Something might carry through on a warranty then. Right, yeah. The, every now and then there'll be, uh, there could be a newer ve vehicle that a uh, that an agency has bought and then ended up not really needing. Uh, we saw a lot of that actually during uh, the beginning parts of the pandemic, uh, especially in the parks and recreation uh, area. So items were bought um, like food trailers uh, and food trucks. And so those, those type of items, they were bought for events over the, you know, over that summer. And of course, everything was canceled. And so then they had to get rid of them. Um, so that that ended up being an opportunity uh, for people to buy newer uh, items and vehicles, which then may have carried a warranty. But well, I'm getting part, to learn, yes. I'm getting kind of getting to learn the critical success factor, which we talked a little bit about earlier. You just, it's, it, it's something new every day and you just need to, uh, you need to be flexible. And that, you know, someone might have a carpet cleaning business and you're doing it the same way every day, but in this, in, in the auction business, it's going to, it sounds like it's going to change every day. Yeah. If you're, if you want deals, you really kind of have to be, be on top of it. Yeah. Sure. Well, let's dial it back to your auction business as we wrap up. Greg, where do you hope to see Minissi bid in five years? Yeah, we've been fortunate uh, to have um, really solid, consistent year over year growth. Uh, even in 2020, when we thought for sure we would have many, many months of little to no auctions. And it turns out we did have two, two slower months, uh, but we ended up uh, having yet another year of growth. And then in 2021, it was our biggest year of growth since 2014. And so that's been, that's been great. And we continue to bring on uh, more and more governments um, across the country. Um, so we started out with zero and we're up our, over 5,000 at this point. And and still adding uh, hundreds more. And th this past year, I think we brought on about 600 more agencies, wow. and we should do that again this year. And so, yeah, there's there's quite. So I imagine a, a lot of your marketing and network is reaching out to other gov government agencies. More, it's not like it's a it's a mission in getting them aware of you because it's such a good deal to do. Yeah, so we do a lot of that. So we have two sides of the, of the business. We're really a marketing company. So on the one hand, we're we're you know marketing our services to the governments to make sure that they know we're available and and how we operate. And then on the, on the other side is marketing the items to make sure the public is aware of those items. Um, and I think we do a good job of both. We utilize a lot of technology and automation and that sort of thing to make it a, a, a pleasant experience. Uh, for both the selling agencies and the buyers. And I think, uh, you know, when you come on and you work with us, you'll really see how much effort uh, our team puts into that. Well, it sounds like a great operation, connecting the buyer with the seller. Well, great. This has been a great discussion on the world of government auctions. Do you have any final points you'd like to share? Yeah, and, and the, one, the one thing is you, you mentioned it about being a win-win. Uh, so, the, the, it's really a win-win-win because all right, the, the, the town itself is able to, to sell their items for more money, 
which allows them to invest in, in more projects. Uh, and a lot of this goes through community projects. Of course, the buyer wins because they're, they have access to the items they're looking for uh, and you know, potentially a great deal on those items. And then the taxpayers of the, the agent of the hey, they're uh, getting more than pennies on the dollar. <laughs> well, that, yeah. And the, the taxpayers, you know, it's off, offset, you know, uh, uh, offsets the budget. So it's, it's really a win, win, win. And, uh, you know, we really uh, put a lot of effort into making, as I said, this as easy as convenient uh, and, you know, as, as least intimidating as possible. Well, Greg, thanks for, uh, Greg Berry, thanks for joining us today on the Home Business Podcast. I'd like to just wrap up with kind of one thought. This has been new to me, and, you know, I've learned some things about government auctions, but for the listeners out there, you know, get online there and see how you can get started uh, working government auctions into your business, either as a side business or something standalone on its own, because it sounds like it could add to any business. Anyhow, um, to learn more about Greg Berry, and Municipid, please visit municipid.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for more information on advertising. Subscribe to our newsletter. Please read the Home-Based Business Startup Guide for more information. Visit homebusinessmag.com or homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kettmanderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based auction day.